We don't seek God's power, we seek His presence. His power and everything else we need is always found in His presence. Show me where you spend your time, money and energy and I'll tell you what you worship. It seems the more I think about not sinning, the more I sin, but the more I think about just loving Jesus, the less I seem to sin. Falling in love seems to be the key. Sometimes God offends our minds in order to reveal our heart. Remember the economy of the kingdom is simple. Every time we come to cross a new threshold, it costs us everything we now have. Every new step may cost us all the reputation and security we've accumulated up to that point. It costs us our life. A mark of blessing is what you're giving, not what you're keeping. When do we get to do the stuff? You know, the stuff here in the Bible, the stuff Jesus did, like healing the sick, raising the dead, healing the blind, stuff like that. The good news is that Jesus is praying for us. The bad news is that we are going to need it. Visitation of God's presence is a byproduct of worship. However, we don't worship in order to gain His presence. He is worthy to be worshipped whether or not He chooses to show up. Find where God is and get behind what He's doing. He always wins. We learn that what happens when we are alone with the Lord determines how intimate and deep the worship will be when we come together. Obedience to the Lord is not only measured by how much we do for our Savior, but by how we obey Him when nobody is looking. As we interact with God, we'll find ourselves more satisfied in Him and less satisfied with things much less important. Worship is not about personality, temperament, personal limitations, church background, or comfort. It is about God. Gifts and abilities, no matter how magnificent, are either limited or enhanced by character. If we believe in a theology that doesn't contain doing the works of Jesus, we will not have a practice of signs and wonders. We need to learn how to keep people through love. Despite imperfections, sins, and irritating habits of other Christians, they belong to Jesus and they need our love as a healthy climate for growth. Our heart's desire should be to worship God. We have been designed by God for this purpose. If we don't worship God, we'll worship something or someone else. When God calls you to an extraordinary task, he provides extraordinary resources. If we serve Jesus then every act and thought has meaning. Acts of kindness aren't just niceties, they become acts of worship. It is important to be biblically literate, but we must also be biblically obedient. Instead of focusing on the great men of God, prefer to focus on the great God of men. One question you never want to ask God is, what's wrong with me, because he'll tell you. God has given us a vision to see the body of Christ move from being in an active audience to a spirit-filled army. God is about to unloose a powerful outpouring of the Holy Spirit of an unprecedented magnitude. He is looking for individuals who will be dread champions for his cause. We're in a declared war, but unless we're clear about who the enemy is, We'll waste our time fighting enemies that aren't enemies at all. There's only one enemy and no matter what people do, say or react people are never the enemy. The enemy is our only enemy. Our passion is to imitate the ministry of Jesus in the power of the Spirit. This requires we must follow Jesus out of baptismal waters, through our personal deserts, and into the harvest. We want to take the ammunition of the balanced evangelical theology with the firepower of Pentecostal practice, loading and the best of both worlds to hit the target of making and nurturing disciples. I also visited several healing meetings, and became angry with what appeared to be the manipulation of people for the material gains of the faith healer. Dressing like sideshow barkers, pushing people over and calling it the power of God, and money, they were always asking for more 
leading people to believe that if they gave they would be healed.